Let's talk about what different grains will do to your whiskey and how they will change the flavor of it. What's up, guys? My name is Chris, and you are listening to the Whiskey Noobs Podcast. And today we are talking about exactly what I just mentioned, the different grains in the mash bill. There's all kinds of different grains. There's a lot more than the four that we're going to talk about today. But these are the four main ones, and they're going to do different things when they're used within a mash bill. Now, I want to highlight something. I'm going to talk a lot about whiskeys. The examples that I'm going to use are going to be whiskeys where that grain is the dominant grain in the mash bill. And those are going to be my examples for the types of flavors that you're going to get from it. However, if you use these grains in conjunction with other grains, the way they combine could make them taste a little bit different. So I might say, for example, that wheat is going to give it a creamier, more vanilla-y type flavor. But maybe wheat, when it's combined with rye and with corn in a four-grain bourbon, for example, maybe then it doesn't have quite that much of a taste of that that sweet vanilla taste. But I'm trying to just lay kind of overarching ground rules. And I'm going to give some examples, and we're going to talk about whiskeys that have that specific flavor to them. And I need to grab the Glen Cairn that I'm going to use. I'm going to do an itty-bitty tasting of each of these, and then I'm going to rinse out the glass because I don't really have the capacity to drink four whiskeys. I already recorded one episode tonight. But I do want to get a tiny taste just so I can talk about the different flavors that I'm getting from each of them. You know, I, I've had each of the ones that we're going to talk about, but I could use a memory jogger so I don't say something dumb. So let's talk about it. There's four grains we're going to cover today. We're going to cover corn, which is an obvious one if you like bourbon. We're going to cover rye, wheat, and barley, because those four grains are used in a ton of whiskeys, probably... I don't know what percentage, an insane percentage of whiskeys. That includes whiskeys EY, like bourbon and American whiskey and Irish whiskey, and also whiskeys with just the Y, like a scotch. All those different types are going to use these four grains heavily. Some types are going to use one grain. Some types are going to use a bunch of the grains combined. So let's break down what those flavors are going to do to the profile. Let me grab a Glencairn. Okay, we've got our Glen. <laughs> I almost just broke it. We've got our Glencairn. We've got our water. I swear I haven't had that much whiskey tonight. I had a glass in the last episode, um, and not even a full glass. But we've got our Glencairn. We've got our water. Let's talk about what these different grains do. So I don't really have a particular order pick, but I'm realizing I should probably go in an order that's not going to abuse my palate too much. So let's start off with malt. Our example for malt is Aberlour 12 Year. This is a single malt scotch, and that's the reason that we're using it. Now, obviously, there are a ton of single malt scotches out there. It's very popular. Any single malt scotch is going to have 100% malted barley in its mash bill. Now, some are going to have very different flavors, especially like a peated scotch is going to have a very strong smoky flavor. So you got to be careful which type you're getting. But the rules that I'm using, and also th these all have different finishes. So like this one is American oak and sherry oak. Different finishes, different flavors. But I'm trying to focus on the common link that all those single malts share. The thing that all of the barley heavy beverages that I have had have in common. And that varies kind of a lot because I poured a little bit too much. That varies kind of a lot because there's a lot of different techniques, a lot of different cultural ways that they do this, where it's being aged and what type of still they're using, the, the shape of the still, even if it's the same type of still. So you're going to notice like a single malt in Ireland, an Irish single malt, is going to taste pretty different from a single malt scotch. And then different single malt scotches in different regions of Scotland are going to have their own different flavors. So I'm painting with a very wide brush here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Let me take a quick nose. I'm going to maybe take a little sip, and we're going to talk about it. Oh, my goodness. This smells better than I remember. All right, Aberlauer. Wow. Fantastic. Um, so what what's barley bringing to the party here? Well, ironically, barley is one that has its own flavor that a lot of people say, myself included, which is malty. And the only way to really describe that is malty. Uh, it kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, I worked on a farm. And ironically enough, not barley, but wheat, we would uh, sometimes chew on like the wheat that would come off of the uh, 
like the wheat grass, I guess straw. We would chew on the actual wheat seeds that would come off of the wheat grass is the way that I'm trying to say this right now. It's a terrible way of articulating. We would chew on the thing that's being harvested, right? That part of the wheat, not the grass part of it. Uh, but it reminds me of that flavor a little bit. That's what reminds me of maltiness. That's what maltiness tastes like to me. Now, you're going to get a lot of different flavors from malt, especially or malted barley, especially because sometimes barley is going to be malted, like in a single malt. Sometimes, like in a single pot still Irish whiskey, it's going to be unmalted. That's going to bring slightly different flavors. But in general, from malted barley, you can expect, or from barley in general, sorry, barley, you can expect maltiness, of course. With malted barley, you're going to get a little bit more of a depth of a grainy flavor, like a, a darker, sweet type of grainy. It reminds me a little bit of a bread. With unmalted, you're going to get a little bit lighter, almost grassier of a flavor. You're going to get more herbal, but still you get that like malty, quote unquote, maltiness, that graininess. But you you get more of this light flavor with it. A lot of times in Irish whiskey, it kind of comes through as like this honey, maybe this light vanilla uh, combined with that little bit of a graininess and that little bit of almost herbal note that I get. Also, sometimes in malts, you're going to get an herbal note. Sometimes with a single malt or with a blended scotch that has malt in it, malted barley in it, you will still get these kind of herbal grassy notes. But it, there's, a, there's a fine line between the two different types of barley. In general, though, barley is going to give you that grainy flavor. It's going to give you kind of like a granola. It reminds me of a granola quite a bit. Sometimes like a, a buttery kind of granola, honey Hopefully, I'm painting a picture that's kind of coherent. And, of course, I'm naming a lot of different notes because different ones are going to have different vibes to them. But in general, <clears throat> that's the type of flavor that I get from it. Usually, we range from a vanilla to like a brown sugar, but not really into the caramel butterscotch realm. For me, that's kind of a lie. Sometimes into the the butterscotch, but like a light butterscotch, not like the like a dark caramel salted caramel like strong punch of caramel flavor not really for me personally so a lot of times it's going to be more in that light sugar vanilla honey brown sugar type of a, a range once again i'm going to cover very big ranges but hopefully you get the idea of what i'm trying to get across so that's barley uh, and this is my single malt that i'm using as an example for barley and once again that mash bill is 100 percent malted barley that's going to be the only one yeah it's the only one that we're going to talk about right now that's actually 100 percent of the grain that it's representing All right, I gave the Glen Cairn a quick rinse. Let's talk about wheat. So I have here Middle West Spirits Straight Wheat Whiskey. So this is not a weeded bourbon. This is a straight wheat whiskey. The mash bill is actually 95% wheat. I'm pretty sure it is 5% barley, or malted barley, which helps with uh, fermentation, which is why a lot of whiskeys are still going to have that malted barley in there. Now let me grab just a little bit of it. I did rinse out the Glen Cairn, so don't come at me in the comment section. And let's talk a little bit about wheat. So in bourbon specifically, wheat is a lot of times going to bring a sweetness. Sometimes they say it's going to bring a lightness. But for me, I usually don't get a light sweet. I get more of a burnt sugar, like still very sweet, but like more of a dark sweet. Um, it reminds me of a burnt sugar, maybe a kind of a brown sugar. Uh, I've mentioned before I get a crescent roll type flavor a lot of times from weeded bourbons. But I haven't had a wheat whiskey in a long time, so I'm excited to uh, nose this and get a little sip here. Wow, it's been a long time since I tasted that. So... This is one that's going to allow that woodiness to come through pretty well. Wheat still allows it to be pretty pronounced. And so a lot of times, um, I, or I should say at least once, in a blind tasting, I have confused that for a bourbon. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I had a, that whiskey specifically. And I was like, is this maybe a bourbon? Because I forgot that I had a wheat whiskey. So we'll have kind of a similar vibe, but it, it it's noticeably different from a bourbon. If you had them side by side, you'd be like, that's not a bourbon. It does have that kind of a burnt sugar taste to it. On the nose, it has almost like a menthol type smell to it. Something different. Something, ooh, maybe anise. Maybe it reminded me of anise a little bit. But then on the palate, it becomes a little bit sweeter, a little bit creamier. Still has 
a touch of a spice that surprised me. I didn't really expect to see that. Uh, rye, which we're about to get to, well, no, it's going to be our last one, uh, is known for having a spice to it. Um, this has kind of a different spice. It kind of reminded me of like a, a very holiday-esque. It's reminding me of some type of a cinnamon candy. Maybe they were heart-shaped? No. No, it's like itty-bitty cinnamon candies. Maybe they're the fireballs, but I don't think they are. Anyhow, some type of a cinnamon candy. Or like big red gum a little bit, but not so cinnamony. Obviously, that's like cinnamon cinnamon. But it's reminding me of kind of that flavor, which is weird. I didn't expect to get that from it. Uh, but in general, definitely still very sweet. Definitely allows for some of that oakiness to come through. Uh you can expect, especially in a weeded bourbon, that wheat is going to bring up the sweetness factor. A lot of times people say it, to them it makes it smoother because it, it makes it a little bit sweeter, which makes it a little bit more approachable. Um, so that's kind of the, the vibe that you can expect. And once again, for me, that usually comes through as like a burnt sugar, a crescent roll type flavor. So not necessarily your sweetness is like vanilla, although I should say I do get vanilla from a few different weeded bourbons that I can think of. But definitely um, sweet in a way that's not boring, I guess is what I'm trying to get across. It's not so light that it's like, oh, this just tastes like whatever. It's, it's sweet in kind of a deep way, a deep, sometimes bready type way. Um, it's a, it, that's a hard one to describe. I actually thought, I thought wheat was going to be the easiest one to describe. But now that I'm doing it, I'm like... That's kind of tough to break down for people. I taste a weeded bourbon, and I'm like, that's a weeded bourbon. But talking about it is a lot more difficult. Weeded bourbons are probably where you're going to see the most use of wheat. Wheat whiskeys are, are less common. I think Woodford Reserve has one that I want to try. But a lot of times you're going to have a weeded bourbon, which is going to be at least 51% corn, usually more, usually like a 60s or 70s. And then that next biggest ingredient is going to be wheat. And it does make a pretty big difference. But that is your wheat. Hopefully that that one ended up coherent because I uh, once I I'm like I can picture the flavor in my head if that makes sense. But trying to describe it, whole different ball game. Let's talk about corn. To describe corn, I have mellow corn, which is a corn whiskey, a Kentucky straight corn whiskey, uh, and its mash bill is at least eighty percent corn. Uh, that's what they say online. This comes to us from Heaven Hill, and it's incredibly inexpensive. Um, so let's talk about it. What flavors does corn bring? I kind of lied when I said that barley is the only one that has its own flavor because corn whiskey or whiskeys that have a lot of times young bourbons with a lot of corn in them, they do get this corny flavor, it, honestly. And there's not a great way to describe it except it tastes like corn whiskey. If you've ever tried just straight moonshine, not apple pie moonshine, not any flavor of moonshine, but just moonshine, it has this distinctly, especially if it's you know a corn-based mash bill, it has this distinctly corny flavor to it that's really hard to describe. It's very specific. Um, but it tastes kind of like corn smells. And then... Once you age it, once you make it into a whiskey, sometimes that still comes through a lot of times in a younger bourbon, but also it's going to have this general sweetness where corn will will kind of just take a back seat and give you a white sugar sweetness. And as you age it, it interacts well with the barrel and it really lets those barrel characteristics come through. So that's why a lot of times with bourbons, you're going to taste more barrel. It's going to have more of a barrely taste to it than a scotch or an Irish whiskey. Corn is really good at transmitting that barrel flavor through, even more so, I would say, than the wheat whiskey that we just tried. Uh, it's it's It really allows it to come through, and it really interacts with it really well. I don't know what's happening specifically on a chemical level. I just know that it is allowing that. It interacts heavily with that barrel. Now, uh, mellow corn is, is a bit young, so I think four years. I believe it's bottled in bond. Yes, it is. So uh, it will still have that corny flavor to it. Let's go ahead and nose it and take a quick sip. On the nose, definitely strong ethanol. Wow. Once again, used to work on a farm. These are all reminding me of that a lot now. Um, this is reminding me of the smell of when a combine, which is harvesting the corn, 
takes the corn up and sprays it into the back of the combine. So it's taking it off of the stock and off of the cob. And then it blows all those scraps out. And it's reminding me of that smell of all that stuff getting blown out. It's like this corny smell. You know, that's what it reminds me of. Now, of course, the ethanol is stronger here. The, uh, the alcohol burn is stronger. This is honestly, this is a very, very inexpensive bottle compared to the other ones that we have here. So I have to give it a little bit of grace in that. But you see more of the woodiness come through. You get that spicy characteristic of the barrel, and then you get kind of that corniness, kind of that vanilla light sugar that I talked about. And that's that's basically what happens. You, you really emphasize that barrel characteristic with a corn whiskey. Last but most certainly not least, I would argue the most versatile of all of these grains. We've got rye. And I used Redwood Empire's Emerald Giant Rye Whiskey as my example just because I knew it was a 95% rye whiskey. And I wasn't sure what the other ones I had were. I'm fairly certain Hard Truth that I have is also 95% rye. That barrel pick is probably still available. So, hey, if you want it, the Hard Truth barrel pick, feel free to go. I'll put a link in the show notes for it. And go check that out because that barrel pick was delicious. And that's what I want to talk about, actually, is the versatility of rye. Now, this honestly doesn't give you the most typical rye flavors, but that's probably what makes it a good example because I know the typical rye flavors. As I mentioned, rye is going to be often attributed with a spiciness. Kind of two different types of spiciness that I get from rye a lot. Sometimes it's like baking spices but strong. So it's like cinnamon but not like a snickerdoodle. It's more like big red gum where to kids it's almost spicy, that type of a cinnamon. Sometimes it's more of the mellow cinnamon. Um, and then sometimes it's a really hot kick of a black pepper. Sometimes it's like you open up your spice cabinet that has all your herbs in it, like all of your different um, herbs for baking, or not baking, I'm sorry, for cooking rather than baking. So like your Italian herbs, your basils, I don't even know all of them, thyme, rosemary, those sorts of things. Uh, sometimes it's like you open up that cabinet and just go and take a big whiff. That's what rye reminds me of sometimes. Um, I think still Austin's rye whiskey, the artist rye, is a great example of that. And I just reviewed a different one that was also a great example of that. What was it? Blue Run. Blue Run was another good example of that. Redwood Empire's Emerald Giant takes ki- – I already poured myself some. What am I doing? Whew. Maybe I shouldn't have had four glasses. <laughs> Rem- I didn't have the full four glasses. The Emerald Giant by Redwood Empire takes a little bit of a different turn to it. I think I know how I want to describe it, but I want to taste it first before I say anything. There is a distinct dill, a little bit of a peppermint, and a weird flavor I can only describe as kind of plasticky, but in a way that I like. It's like sweet, but kind of plasticky. I don't know how else to describe that, but I actually enjoy it, so it's weird. Um, Now, I've heard people say that like sometimes dill is thought, and I don't know how true this is, but I've heard people say that dill is thought of as being a little bit lesser of like a rye whiskey, but I actually really enjoy it. So this has a strong dill note to it, but it's very different. Like I have to be in the mood for this, Um, but that's Uh, one really good example of how versatile rye whiskey is because this tastes totally different. Now, let's flip that coin all the way down to the hard truth barrel pick that I just mentioned that I have. It's probably still available. Um, That is totally different. That one reminds me of pie crust. It has this weird dark red fruit flavor to it, a little bit of a cocoa flavor to it. It's a fully different ball game, but they all have the same kind of a backbone that is kind of a spice. That's the only way that I can put it. But if you, if I didn't know any better and you put hard truth in front of me and you put this Emerald Giant in front of me and you said, what types of whiskey are these? I would be hard pressed to guess that they were the same type of whiskey. I'd be very confused if I didn't have the knowledge of these grains like I'm talking about right now. I would just take stabs at them because I would have no idea. The hard truth honestly reminds me more of a bourbon It has that rye to it, but it reminds me of like a very high rye bourbon is honestly what it reminds me of. So very different flavors. Rye is very versatile depending on how it's distilled, how it's aged, how it's blended together. You get super different flavors. So that's why I want to save that one for last because also sometimes rye is a bit aggressive and it it fries your taste buds. This one's honestly not, but some of those more uh, spicy black peppery ones I talked about are. 
Um, but yeah, shameless plug for that barrel pick because if it is still available, uh, I highly recommend you go check it out. It was so good, and I know that it was a little bit pricey, um, but I, I truly think it's worth it. I bought, <laughs> I think I bought myself four or five bottles. I basically just took whatever I was going to make from it, bought bottles, and then this time around, I actually bought a couple more with money out of pocket because I liked it that much. But that's just me. I think it's very tasty. Rye is an incredibly versatile grain, but in general, people are going to talk about rye spice. They're going to talk about uh, the taste of rye bread, which I don't really eat very often, so I can't speak to it very much. The I talk about opening up your spice cabinet and taking a whiff. Those are the types of things that you're going to get quite a bit from a rye whiskey or from a, a high rye bourbon. It's going to it's going to taste like a high rye bourbon is going to taste like a bourbon that has a touch of those flavors that I mentioned. Usually that's going to come through with more of the rye spice type flavor. I don't think I've had a lot of bourbons that come through as like a dill or that come through anything like that, that hard truth that I mentioned. The hard truth tastes like a bourbony rye, but the distinctive, weird, dark red fruit note that I get from it, I've not had in a high rye bourbon before that I can think of. So anyways, rye, very versatile, gives you very different flavors etc. I, I could go on and on. And once again, I painted with a really wide brush in this episode, so I, I know that there's going to be, be people who say, really shouldn't have had those. And those were sips, but we're just coming out of dry January. I know there's going to be people who say that I missed this note, or no, this grain actually tastes this way. Because depending on your experience with it, they're all pretty different. But my goal was to give you a vibe of what each of them are. So run through it very quick. Running through it very quickly. I really can't talk right now. I would say uh, single malt, or I should just say barley in general. A lot of times it's going to have a malty kind of a honey kind of a sweetness. Wheat is going to give you a different type of sweetness. Where to me it reminds me of burnt sugar. Sometimes it reminds me of a breadiness. Some people say more of a vanilla and a cream. Corn is going to give you a very similar type of sweetness, where it is. Just plain white sugar, kind of vanilla sweetness, but most importantly, it's really going to let that barrel shine through, and you're really going to get those oaky flavors. And then rye, super versatile. I don't really think I have to recap it, but sometimes rye spice, sometimes dill, sometimes mint, sometimes herbs, sometimes baking spice. Just really depends on how it is done, um, what type of mash, what type of aging, that sort of a thing. All right. I think I have covered all four grains that I wanted to talk about in pretty decent detail. Let me know how this varies for you, especially if you disagree with me. I'm happy to hear from you. You can leave feedback on um, the, uh, Spotify. They allow you to actually answer a question about the show. Let me know in that feedback. Or if you're not on Spotify, you can either DM me or shoot me an email. If you're on the Patreon, the easiest way is right through the Discord if you're listening to this and you're on the Patreon page, go on the Discord and let me know if you've had a different experience from me because I want to know because this is just my palate, my taste buds, my experience with these types of grains. That's all that I have for this episode, though, guys. So I will leave you with learn to drink, drink to learn. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Whiskey Noobs. If you need more Whiskey Noobs content in your life, make sure you check out our Patreon page in the show notes. And if you like the show, please make sure to leave a five-star rating or review. It only takes a couple of minutes, and they're way more helpful than people realize. If you want to do tastings alongside the show, make sure you join the email list by sending an email to whiskeynoobspodcast at gmail.com with a subject line that says email list. You'll receive monthly emails with a list of the whiskeys that will be featured throughout the month so that you can buy them ahead of time. You can also find more Whiskey Noobs content on Instagram at Whiskey underscore Noobs and on TikTok at Whiskey Noobs Podcast. Once again, thank you guys for listening. The Whiskey Noobs Podcast does not support underage or otherwise irresponsible consumption of alcohol.